everybody. Hope everyone's having a good afternoon. Today is Thursday, March the 3rd, and I just wanted to come on and give you guys an update. I had two appointments today at the physician's office and um, one at the hospital, two total, one at the physician, one at the hospital. The um, purpose of this, I wanna give you guys kind of an overview of how they do things uh, with my surgeon and my hospital. I've found that everything seems to be so repetitious, it's driving me nuts. I feel like I've given the same information to five different people, but it's the same questions over and over and over again. And I'm sure it's because of the different divisions in the hospital, the different departments and everything, wanna make sure that all the bases are covered. And you know, I, and I get that, but at the same time, Good grief, it's it's so frustrating and I'm glad today was my last appointments before my surgery. The next time I set foot in that hospital is on the day of my surgery, which is the 22nd of March. So I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about what happened at those appointments today. So if you have to go through something similar, you know what to, what to expect, because honestly, I really didn't know what to expect from either one of them. They were both super simple, nothing to stress about. So I'm gonna go through through some of that and just help educate you guys a little bit. So um, I apologize for the god awful hairdo here. Um, I'm rocking the little mini mini ponytail. I barely have enough hair to even worry about putting it in a ponytail. But the weather here, it's rainy, snowy, windy. You name it, we've got it today, and it's. It's 30 degrees, so it's not super cold, but it's just nasty. And I said, you know what? Forget it. I'm not even going to bother trying to do anything with it. So, sorry. Um, so, the first appointment that I had was called a shared medical appointment. And I had no idea what shared medical really meant. But basically, what shared medical appointment means is all of the people that are having surgery in the week that I am. At least I think it's all of them. I'm not 100%. But most of them I think got together there was I think seven or eight patients and then there was the physician's assistant and the scheduling woman all together in one room they give you a paper a consent form that basically says what happens in this appointment stays in this appointment kind of like a what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas kind of thing so we're allowed to talk openly about the surgery, um, any medical conditions that we've got, fears that we've got, concerns. It's really kind of a neat thing. Everybody was pretty open and, and asking asking questions. Um, nothing that I think I really need to recap with you guys, pretty basic, but um, it was still kind of nice to see the people that are gonna be there going through the same thing that I am. I think there was one woman there that might have the same date that I have, um, but she was, she was one of the more quiet ones and actually she's wheelchair bound and I noticed that her her right foot has um, she, either been amputated or she just doesn't have a right foot but it was bandaged up so I'm, I'm guessing amputation which is you know I feel bad for her it's gonna make it even harder but um, but like I was saying it was good to be to be there with all the other patients so I'm gonna go ahead and get into this because this is gonna be a long video I think so I'm gonna go through, they gave us a packet. It's just a PowerPoint slideshow. And I'm just gonna run through this real quick. It's a UC Health, Health, UC Health Weight Loss Center Pre-Op Education Basics. And um, it's got a what to expect before, during, and after surgery. Um, before surgery, everybody kinda knows this, stop smoking. I don't smoke, so it's not an issue for me, but for others it is. It um, causes pulmonary issues with your surgery. You could have more complications and obviously the, the health risks anyway. Um, that and anyone that was taking um, hormone replacement therapy or uh, birth control pills with estrogen in them, they need to stop those. And you can resume those after your surgery, but you need to be off of those one month before the surgery. Um, the question was raised in there in the class, what if you have an IUD or um, the depo thing that they implant in your arm? Um, if you have those, do those have to be removed? And he said, no, you do not. Anything that can be easily stopped, which is pills, stop, but anything that is surgically implanted to leave, leave alone. 
Um, if you do have something that's surgically implanted, you do need to make sure that as soon as you get out of the surgery, as soon as you're possibly able, you need to be up and walking because the concern is blood clots. So walking, walking, walking. Uh, next slide was before surgery, two to three weeks, start your pre-op diet. Mine is a two week liquid diet that starts next Tuesday. Um, I talked on a previous video, mine, my diet is all shakes and water. I'm not allowed to have popsicles and jello and all this stuff that other people are allowed to have. Mine is all shakes and water, which I'm okay with that. Takes the decision making out of it. Just five shakes a day, five bottles of water, and I'm done. Um, <clears throat> three days prior to surgery, we have to wash the wash our stomach area where the where the incisions are going to be with a product called Hibiclens or chlorhexidine which is this stuff they actually provide it there for us we have to do that once a day for three days and then on the day of surgery when we go in we have to wash our um, and sit where our incisions incisions will be this helps kill any staph bacteria that may be on your stomach which is the major cause of infection after surgery so um yeah that'll be interesting i'm going to make a note on my calendar or something to do that because i'll i'll forget to do that but that was interesting i hadn't heard that yet and i hadn't ever heard anybody on any other videos or any other chat rooms or groups facebook groups that i'm in i haven't heard anyone talk about doing that so that was pretty interesting and then um, the night before surgery, no food or drink. I'm supposed to be having food anyway, so no drinking after after midnight, and that includes gum, mints, anything like that. Nothing at all. Um, the next section was about medication, stopping medications prior to surgery. One week prior, no herbal supplements, vitamin E. Um, Aspirin, ibuprofen, Aleve, Advil, Excedrin, Meloxicam. You can take Tylenol. You can even take Tylenol on the day of surgery, and it's okay. 48 hours prior to surgery, glucophage and metformin. You have to be off of that. I'm not on any of those. I do take ibuprofen every now and then for headaches. So if I have a headache in that week, I'll have to take Tylenol, which is fine. Um, next page is what, what to bring, what not to bring to the hospital. Uh, what to bring. If you're on a CPAP or BiPAP, you have to bring that. That's required. Um, wear comfortable loose clothing, inhalers, I don't have an inhaler, uh, driver's license, photo ID, insurance card, and someone to bring you to the surgery and stay with you while, you're, while the procedure is going on. You cannot be there by yourself. You can also not leave the hospital without someone to drive you because you're going to be on um, narcotic drugs um, when they send you home. What not to bring, jewelry, makeup, nail polish, or contact lenses. Do not bring lotions, powders, or perfumes. Deodorant, they said, is acceptable, but they discourage you from wearing it the day of the surgery, but obviously you can wear it the day after when you're going, going home. Optional to bring, and I plan on doing a video when I actually pack for the hospital, and then I'll do a post-surgery video of what I actually used. Um, optional robe, slippers, socks, toothbrush, toiletries, cell phone charger, and things to keep you busy like your iPad, games, or books. What I hear though is you spend a lot of your time trying to just sleep and eat and drink and walk. So some of the suggestions they gave. Um, next one, day of surgery. When you arrive at the hospital, um, we're supposed to be there two hours prior to our surgery time. Um, they don't actually give strict guidelines, stay where they stay on schedule. Um, my approximate time is 1245 in the afternoon. I have to be there at 1045, which was a change from 1030 from last week. And I finally, they explained us why that is, why the scheduling is so loose. And I didn't know this, it's kind of interesting. Every time the surgeon does a sleeve procedure, they're timed. And they take every single surgery and they add it into their average time. And so as the surgery scheduling goes along, their average length of time changes from surgery to surgery. So it may be an hour and 15 minutes one time, it may be an hour and a half the next, it may be only an hour the next time. So they have to adjust the schedule up and down according to the average length that the surgery takes. So that's why sometimes you'll see and it's frustrating that 
they tell you to be there in your surgeries at one o'clock, but you wind up not actually getting in until two o'clock. Well, that's some of the reason reason why is that they don't exactly know how long every procedure is going to take. They may run into complications or it may go much more smoothly than they think. Uh, they may find a hiatal hernia and have to go in and fix that, which, you know, that only adds a couple minutes. But every little thing that they have to do takes longer. So it makes sense where they can't guarantee you're going to go into surgery at that specific time. They also said we are a level two or level, level three trauma center, at least my hospital is. So if they have someone come in in critical condition, like a shooting victim or something like that, and they need the OR, those people, they're going to get preferential treatment. So not really preferential treatment. That's a bad way of saying it, but they get prioritized. There's, they're dying when we're not. So what they said is, remember the day of your surgery. That is your day. You will have your surgery that day, but it may not exactly happen at the time that they specify on your paperwork. So, um, so mine got moved to arrival time, 1045, approximate surgery time, 1245 in the afternoon. Um, tells you where to park, where to go when you get there. Um, pretty hospital specific. What they'll do the day of surgery, you'll be escorted. This again is for UC Westchester Hospital, University of Cincinnati, Westchester, um, and Westchester, Ohio. So this is going to be a little bit different for everyone. It says, um, first you'll be escorted to a private room, given a hospital gown, check your vital signs, your weight, blood pressure, and temperature, start IV fluids, don't want to get dehydrated, and they'll put the compression stocking, stockings on your legs to prevent blood clots and help with circulation. Um, they said they're going to roll out the red carpet for you, which isn't really going to feel like red carpet. It's going to feel like everybody's riding up your butt. It's what it's going to feel like that you'll meet the nurse, the anesthesiologist, patient care assistant, operating room staff, and the surgeon will come in to see you. So everybody's going to be coming in and they said they're going to ask you your name and your date of birth about a thousand times. Just get used to it. Don't take offense to it. They're not quizzing you. They just want to make sure they're operating on the right patient. Makes sense to me. Okay, day of surgery. Um, this is in the operating room. Your bed will be wheeled into the operating room. The temperature is going to be 68 to 70 degrees, so it's going to be cold. You will have heated blankets, though, to help with that. They'll put you on the operating table. And I have to laugh here, and I am not joking. If you can see this, it actually says they'll put you face up. Well, duh. You're not going to try to operate on my stomach from my back, are you? Ridiculous. Some of the things, I don't know. Anyway, anesthesia will be started as soon as you're placed on the table. You'll also be hooked up to a heart rate monitor. IV fluids continue through the whole thing and the compression stockings still stay on. Then they also gave a diagram of where the incisions will be approximately. Um, one of the girls in the class that we took said, I had gallbladder surgery. Will they use the same incisions and they said if they come within a half an inch to the left or right of where their measurements fall, they will try to use the original incisions that you already had, but they will not compromise your surgery or your safety for cosmetic reasons. So she may wind up with five brand new incision marks or she may get lucky and they may overlap some. So um, good question for her though. They, that was a good question. Um, after surgery in the recovery room, yeah, you'll wake up, they'll monitor, monitor you. They said this, the recovery room in this hospital is like a miniature ICU. They do keep very, very close watch on you because that time, that initial coming out and um, waking up is critical. Uh, they're gonna monitor for pain and nausea and work to reduce, control, or eliminate um, any nausea because that's one of the worst things you can experience is any um, vomiting. They don't want vomiting at all. Um, discharge, the three things he said that, it, that will keep you alive are to sip water every 15 minutes, walk every hour, and take big deep breaths to prevent pneumonia. He said if you do those three things that will save your life. Um, you have to have someone take you home. They will not release you on your own. You have to have somebody to take you home. Um, 
if you're experiencing any of these, you call the hospital right away. There's a dedicated line to get you right to um, where you need to be. Shortness of breath, fever greater than 101, rapid heart rate, pus drainage from the incision, redness around the incisions, bigger than a dime, uh, persistent vomiting or nausea. You have to call immediately. Um, to, to, to post-op care, uh, we have to see, go back in and see the surgeon 10 to 14 days after. We have to see the behavioral health specialist 30 to 60 days out. Six months, we see the physician's assistant again. Um, at, at six months again, so six weeks, six months, one year, and then annually. He was telling us a story of a gentleman, 24 years old, had surgery a two years ago and has since regained 117 pounds because he stopped coming in for his follow-up visits. It was so sad. I, I think I almost saw tears in his eyes when he was talking about, about it because it's just ridiculous that someone would go through what we put ourselves through. The, you know, some of, some people have those six month uh, weight loss attempts, then the pre-op diet that you go through, the surgery itself and the recovery, lose the weight and then turn around and regain it because you, you didn't keep up with your follow-ups. You know, he could have helped get him, keep him back on track, but it, it was just really disappointing disappointing story. It was really hard to hear that. He also told us a story of a woman who uh, had gone through the six month physician's assisted weight loss program. That's hard as heck in itself. Did the two week pre-op diet, the liquid diet, came in on the day of surgery, had only lost one pound. And they said, what have you been doing? And she said, okay, I admit I've been eating some and they said, tell us what you've been eating. And she said, oh, I've had some popcorn. I've had mashed potatoes. I've had macaroni and cheese. And I've had this and I've had that. And the whole point of that pre-op diet is to shrink your liver to make it small enough to move it out of the way so they can get to your stomach. They said it's kind of like trying to drive with mud on your windshield. You know, you can kind of see and you can kind of, kind of make it. But it's a safety issue. So they actually canceled her surgery because of that. Um, one, again, one of those things I just can't understand why you would go through. And I mean, she's put probably at that point seven months or more into this. And because she couldn't stop eating, that she really honestly needs some more behavioral counseling before she goes back in and tries again. I don't know if she's going to have to start from the beginning or just do the pre-op pre again. But I'm so sad. I just don't understand that. Um, and then some of the frequently asked questions, um, this one was funny. They said it's their favorite question, how long before you can have sex again? And the guy said, Ivan said, if you do it and it hurts, stop. Pretty simple. Don't hurt yourself. Um, how much weight can I lift after surgery? He said there are no weight restrictions, but if you bend over to pick something up and you feel, feel it in your stomach that it's hurting, just don't, don't bother. Um. How long before you can go back to work? About a week. It depends on the person. You know, if you have extra time, you can take off. Take off as much time as you can. Um, me, I'm taking six days right now. He says six days is okay. He'd like to see me take more, but he's not going to require it. So I have a an office job, and I'm not really too worried about it. But if I if I try it and it doesn't work, I'll use more of it my vacation time. I take more off. How long will the surgery take? Again, we you know kind of touched on that. They said an average is about two hours, and that's from door to door. That's from going in the door, coming back into the door again at the recovery in the recovery room. So on average, uh, will a resident be performing my surgery? The University of Cincinnati is a teaching hospital. This particular hospital has one resident right now, so there is a possibility that the resident could be. They need three hands to do the surgery because there's five incisions so they need a hand for each one so they need three people so it'll be typically it'll be a scrub nurse the doctor and the resident but the resident is there to to learn um, and the sleeve is he said it's honestly a boring procedure we do them all the time if they've seen them once they've seen them a hundred times so if there's something else 
um, bigger, better going on, not necessarily better, but something more intriguing going on down the hallway, that's where they're going to be. So it may wind up being um, another doctor or an additional nurse in there. But either way, there has to be three people in there to, to do the surgery. Uh, that's it for this. Um, really, that one was just kind of a very informal thing. And then he took everyone individually back to his office and asked if we had had any questions. Um, and if someone on a group on Facebook had asked about the size of the bougie that they use, the bougie is what they use as a guide as to how much of the stomach to leave. Um, the smallest bougie is a French, called a French bougie. The smallest one is a 32. Sorry, I'm slipping off my seat here. The smallest is a 32 and the largest is a 40. And um, my doctor uses a 40 on everyone, every, every patient. So they put that tube, that bougie in there, and that gives them an idea of how much stomach to leave. And then they sew over the staple line. So that actually takes up a little bit of that room. Um, so some people worry if they have a 40 that they're not gonna lose as much weight because it leaves a bigger stomach. I say, I trust my doctor. I'm paying him to do this. I've put my faith in him. So if he thinks it's, it's good and he's had success, then I'm okay with that. So that's that. That's the shared medical appointment. The next appointment that I had was my pre-admission testing. And I had no idea what to expect. No one really ever said what they were going to do. So um, I, I went over from the physician's building. I actually ran, had about an hour to kill, so I ran and went shopping for a little bit and came back. Um, you go to the registration desk, they ask your name and your date of birth again, and they give you an armband, one of the little hospital armband things. I had to take this off, it was itching me, itching me to death. But um, that's so they can scan you into their system and know that they're working on the right patient. Um, and then they took me back and asked me the same thousand questions over and over again. Have you ever had any heart conditions, any surgeries? Are you allergic to anything? It's just the same things over and over and over again. And I said, no, I haven't had anything but an endometrial ablation. That's all I've had. And that's not really a surgery. That's a procedure. That's it. You know, they ask about family history of, of diabetes, high blood pressure, all of that stuff. And um, I'm fortunate I don't have any any of that. So that part was pretty simple. Um, they did blood pressure. They checked my weight again, even though they had a, had checked my weight at the last appointment at the shared medical. They had me weigh in there too. But weird thing was, it was about a pound different. I was a pound lighter when I got over to the to the pre-op diet. So I like the hospital scale better than the scale at the the physician's office. So thought that was kind of interesting. Then they did a quick blood draw. I think they were just doing what was called a type in screen. Tells them what blood type I am. Um, I could have told them that. I've actually got my donor card with it listed on there, but they have to do their own thing, so whatever. Um, she did an awesome job. She got me in one one stick, had no problems, no, no bruising. I don't think, maybe one little tiny one, but the last time I did it, it was like, bleh, huge bruise, awful. So I did that and then the um, anesthesiologist came in and she asked me 300 more questions, all of which I said no, no to. She did the strength tests again that I just did at the fitness visit earlier this week where you hold your arms out and she tries to push them down and same with your legs and she listened to my lungs and my heart and, and the back, listened to my stomach. Um, poked around on my belly, make sure nothing was hurt, and checked my feet to make sure there was no swelling or anything like that. Um, she said everything looked good, so she left, and then the first girl came back in again and went through the day, the day before and day of surgery stuff again. This is why I'm saying it's getting repetitive. She basically said word for word, verbatim, what they said in the, the prior appointment. She was the one that actually gave me my fancy schmancy antibacterial soap though which she said she said this stuff does not lather she said I actually had a patient one time call me and said I just got out of the shower and I used the whole daggone bottle and I could not get that stuff to lather up she said it does not lather so don't panic <laughs> people do the strangest things sometimes 
but so that was that um I think that was all that we did there um blood pressure blood questions yeah that was all that was all that we did there so she said my phone number is on the bottom of the form if you have any questions if you get home and think of anything just call me so it's pretty simple my appointment was at one o'clock I may have gotten in a few minutes early but not very many and I was in my car at 112 so it was it was pretty pretty quick I was pretty impressed um, after that since I took the day off work anyway I went shopping um, grab some lunch actually speaking of lunch <laughs> this was something else that they gave us that I thought was kind of cool they gave you a card that's got your name and your surgery date on it and then on the back you guys want to read what that says this basically if you go out to eat at a restaurant a lot of restaurants will let you order off of the children's or seniors menu and get the discounted price because you can't hold as much food as a normal normal person can which I thought that was pretty cool because I don't want to go out and spend 20 bucks you know at a at a restaurant and not be able to eat any of it I mean I could still bring it all home and munch on it you know whatever but I thought that was kind of neat so I'm gonna I don't know if you got to read all of it but I want to put that in my car and just keep it in there for when we go out to eat um, obviously way after my surgery I'm not allowed to have any real real food till the, the second month and that's puree and so be like soups and squishy vegetables and stuff but uh, so after that then I went then I went shopping I've been trying to kind of wrap up getting everything that I'm gonna need for um, at least getting through my my pre-op diet I've got everything and I wanted to get everything ready for the hospital I'm a I'm a prepper I'm a planner so I want to make sure I've got everything I was thinking about um, shoes coming home from the hospital I don't want to have to mess with shoelaces and stuff like that and I, uh, I was saying something in front of my son and he said well I said I want something to just slip on he said well, why don't you just wear your slippers and I thought you know I could but if it's wet outside I don't want to I don't want to ruin my slippers so I was looking for a pair of tennis shoes that you could just slip on they used to be really big a couple of years ago everybody had all this the slip on tennis shoes where there's no back because I don't want to have to bend over and my you know squish my stomach because tying my shoes right now is one of those things that's hard so I went to the Skechers store, we have a Skechers um, outlet, and I found these that I can just slip on, just a plain gray, they had them in black too, but they just slip on. Um, they were 30 bucks, but I can wear them after, after the surgery, no problem. Um, so those were kind of cool, and that'll save me from having to bend over and mess with all that, I can just slip them on and go, and they're, they're out, you know, they're outdoor shoes. So it won't be any won't be any problem to walk in the parking lot. It is March here. My surgery is in March. Sorry, rocking the boat there. Um, so I don't know what the weather is going to be like. It could be soaking wet, or it could be 75 degrees and beautiful the day of my surgery, or coming home. Who knows? So um, that was the Skechers store. Then I also stopped at Kohl's. I have a gift card that I got from work over Christmas time, and we don't have a Kohl's where I live. So when I get around where there's a Kohl's at, sometimes it's nice to stop. And I was wandering around, I was trying to find those shoes and they didn't have anything. And um, I wound up over in housewares and I really just need to stop going going there because I thought, oh, I want that, I want that, I want that. I wound up only buying four little things. They all, they're all the same things. But I've heard talk, people talking about um, utensils, using smaller utensils to take smaller bites. I found some little plastic ones at Kroger or local grocery store the other day but then I found these two. These are little appetizer forks and spoons. Um, if you can see they're pretty small I mean compared to my finger they're they're tiny um, but that way I've got I don't want to cheapen this experience um, you know the plastic ones are fine whatever I can take those along with me and throw them away you know at work and whatever but um, 
these were, I wouldn't have normally bought these, but since I had that gift card, it wasn't my own money anyway. These were $2 a piece, but these are nice. I mean, these are nicer than the silverware that I have here in the house. So, um, I bought those. I got two of each. I figured it's just me using them, so I don't need a whole lot. I can keep up on my dishes pretty good, as long as these don't wind up in the garbage disposal. We had a casualty yesterday. My husband was sitting on the couch filing off where the garbage disposal got one of the spoons. But so that was my that was my day pretty much. Um, everything went really well. I'm to the point now where I'm really ready to just get this done. Um, all the fun stuff is is over. Now it's the, this is probably going to be the other than getting through the initial approval and getting a, a surgery date. This is probably going to be the hardest part for me. Um, today's Thursday. Sorry, rocking again. Dag on. So sorry. Um, today's Thursday, so I've got Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday of regular regular days. So there's going to be some eating going on. We have birthdays that we're celebrating this weekend. My sister's birthday was at the end of January. Her husband's birthday was in February and my husband's birthday is next week. So we're celebrating all three of those together at a Mexican restaurant that we always go to when we do this. So there will be some Mexican food, which means there will be margaritas, which at this point, really, who cares? I'm gonna eat what I wanna eat these next four, four days four and a half including the rest of today but so we'll be doing that and um then next Tuesday I start my start my liquid diet and it's all downhill from there um they said basically if you can make it through the first three to four days then your body kind of adjusts and says oh wait okay so this is what we're going to have to work with this is the way it's going to be then it starts to metabolize and starts to use what you're feeding it instead of craving constantly craving more and wanting more so she said by then whatever kind of fatigue and headaches that you're getting should go away and then the the other 10 days or so should be easier that's what i'm hoping anyway hoping for that um i think that's all i've got for you guys today I will check in probably once during the liquid diet and then I will check in again the night that I pack for the hospital so I can show you what I plan to take with me and then I'll try to do a couple short videos actually at the hospital. I know those seem to be the ones that everybody wants to see. I know that's the ones that I've enjoyed the most. I love watching um, Killing Fat Amy with VSG. Her first meal, I, she was still kind of spacey, still kind of out of it, and spilling, spilling, spilling the broth down the front of her and stuff. I mean, it's it's not the situation. It wasn't funny, but with Amy, she's humorous, and so I know she takes it all in stride. And so those are the videos that I find interesting. Are the real life? Here's what I'm going through right now, not the the posed and beautiful. I like the the real and the messy and the the honest. So that's what I'm going to try to do for you guys. But I'm going to wrap this up. Oh my gosh, 33 minute video. So um, I'll talk to you guys again soon. If you have any comments, comment below. Or um, you can email me, tarathrives at yahoo.com. I'll see you guys again soon. Bye-bye.